And this is Alan T. Trith bringing you Soul Blazer once again. After last time when I rather embarrassingly died right at the end, we're going to be heading back into the underground area to finish up that last dungeon. The sad part is I think I was only like two or three bases away. I should mention that you can push pause, I think it's pause, uh, the start button to see how many bases you've got left in a particular area. It can be useful later in the game when it's easy to overlook one or two. Yep, didn't even unlock the shortcut. Gotta go all the way back. Oh, well, let's get a few gems out of it. Oh, that's right. Ah, that's right. Yeah, you die, you lose all your gems. Still, I'm pretty early on in the game, so it's not that huge of a deal. Magic is of questionable use anyway. It's good against normal monsters, not so good against the bosses. But I don't think there's any spells that's really that useful against the boss. This is one of those games, that games with the ting. You recognize games with the ting. That means whenever you hit an enemy that you can't hurt, it goes ting. A very noticeable, loud, obnoxious sound. So at least in this game, there's nothing like it. Well, I think of games of Tang. I think of Chrysalis. And yeah, we'll be getting to that later. But um, the thing with Chrysalis is that sometimes you could reach a boss before you'd leveled up enough to hit them. So when you heard Tang, you meant, it meant Doom. I mean, you couldn't beat the boss. Here, you're just using the wrong weapon. I really should find a better place to stand in. If I had any brains, I don't have any gems to use magic, never mind. Okay. And there's the shortcut. Yeah, that little uh, enemy base in the bottom there, can't get there yet. Fortunately, there's just one left here. Not a good spot to kill him. And not get killed again myself. That would be very embarrassing. I don't think there's too many of these guys, so... Ugh. That's what this game needed. A cheat code that just makes every boss just spit out all its enemies really fast. Another old man who's screaming about a ghost. Well, we'll check into that when we get back to town. And since we don't hear of this gem, I think we get a little some experience from it. Oh, he's just, she's telling you to think about the swords, yeah. That's going to come into play in the next dungeon, to be honest. Uh, we're done here? Yeah, I think we're done here. Let's go ahead and just head back through the gem. Save the creature once you return to the correct sword. And go back. Okay, let's see what we've unlocked. Ah, oh, yes, the dream rod. Very important thing. I'm using that for the rest of the game. Ugh. <sighs> This reminds me of that demo at the beginning of uh, the Zelda CDI games. You can make me crouch and do the duck walk. Cool, huh? No, not, not even remotely. In fact, the only really useful that had it, it mentions that um, you can crab walk. The only real use of the L and R buttons is to, uh, well, to pull gems toward you. The only way I ever found out that was when I was messing around with crab walking, and I happened to uh, have the button held. I will mention there are sometimes some enemies who are it's easier to hit them just having your sword sticking out. When you crab walk in a dungeon, you stick your sword straight out, and it, it'll hurt enemies. Oh, let's see. Goat food for a billion bucks. Yeah, that sounds fair. Okay. 
Goat food, not necessary, but, oh, excuse me. It has its uses. Oh, and we have someone who's asleep. Well, we got something just for that. The Lundra. There's what I'd love to do. It's been a while since I played a Lundra, too. Well, a Lundra the game. I don't know if I played a Lundra, too, before I played a Lundra. No idea the games are completely different. I think I remember how Lundra was that, um... I used to see, see it in used shops all the time. I remember it had a shiny cover. It was a Working Designs game. Working Designs is a great little group who took games that never made it to America and translated them. I think they went down, too. I remember picking up, um... Growlancers. They're like a really nice set that came with a pack of cards and, a. Uh, a little ring that represents, like, resembled the ones in the game and a watch. Well, Willie and I used to joke about that all the time. It's like, oh yes, I bought this nice watch. Came with the game. The game wasn't too bad. I'm, I'm not a huge strategy fan, but nah. Okay, we got our armor finally. Yay! Ah, and some experience to boot. And since we're already in the town, there's no reason to teleport back. Okay. Uh, we'll have to head back to the dungeon sooner or later to get the last item. Oh, I'm not sure why not give him the food. Equipped item which belongs, used to belong to the painter. Okay. Well, that's gonna skip in the head just a bit, but not too much. Ah, so he mentions right there the, the village elder who we're trying to rescue. He was swallowed up into a painting in the house on top of a hill. And uh, like the guy just there mentioned, we need someone, something that belonged to that guy to uh, go into the painting. Uh, that's the architect. He's going to do something while we're gone. Oh, and there's the goat going to get more goat food. Okay, yeah, we gotta go run in there and grab this real quick. I didn't mention the soundtrack was really nice on this. Sorry, I keep yawning. Oh, sleepy. But. Okay, up the elevator again. And down here. Okay, here we go. We have Leo's brush, Leo's paintbrush, which we use to go into the painting. But while we're here, might as well go ahead and knock this up. Thankfully, it's a fast one. Boy, I wish they all did that. Which unlocks an old man. No old men in this village. Old men with colored hair. Again, fighting that urge to make a python joke. Not gonna do it. Okay, we're done. Nothing here. This area is clear. Okay, there. Okay. Okay, we have everything we need to go into the next one, so we're good to go. See, I guess we'll stop by the old man. Let's see what he's got. Oh, and there's our little uh, shortcut all tucked away nice and in this fence. Okay. Yeah, this game also has uh, similar tones to, um... Uh, what was that game? Terranigma. Another fantastic game. We'll definitely be hitting that one later. Sadly, never came to America. So disappointing. Uh, sorry if I keep losing focus like that. You get old, you get all this crap in your head, and it just keeps popping out of your ears. 
It was a good game, though. Anyway, back to this game. Now that we have the... Uh, what was it? Leo? Oh, yeah, Leo's Brush. Okay, we get to hear something of the story here. Lisa, I won't be able to see you for a while. If you have any problems, please see the village chief. Take care of your friends Turbo the dog, Lou the dolphin, Gnome the snail, and Marie the doll. And we'll mention one of my father's pets. That was kind of struck me, that dialogue. Was it Dr. Leo or Dr. Doolittle? But looking back on it, yeah, it was sort of a uh, hint. The doctor's basically saying if something happened to him, to go find those people. Or those animals, I should say. The first person we need is the mayor. When we get to the mayor, well, we look at the painting that has the mayor's face. Well, you'll take our word for it, the mayor's face being in there. It's just a pink and blue thing. Okay, but we equip the brush and we are dragged into the painting. Okay. Two birds that have a very predictable and quite convenient flight plan. Oop. That's the game for you though. Some enemies have a really convenient way of moving. And some were just sort of erratic. Okay. And... Not a whole lot left to release. Except for that tulip. And of course, as they've been mentioning in the source... Oh. This might throw you for a loop here, seeing as the torches in the underground weren't monsters. But these are. They're also different in that they can only fire in the four cardinal directions. Which makes them a little bit easier to deal with. Look at that, I already backed up, up to 100 gems. Okay. Okay, these soldiers will do a spin and throw a spear. Just don't be in front of them. <laughs> they come one at a time. So I mentioned that the painting is called The World of Evil. It doesn't really seem that evil, does it? Soldiers, birds, and moving torches. Oh no, you think the world of actually you get to, you go to the world of evil later in the game, and it doesn't quite look like this. I'm not familiar with the various planes from Planescape, but I imagine this is where the the devils live. I recall in the. Uh, I was listening to a blog somewhere, someone mentioning that, that the demons and the devils and the Dungeons and Dragons universe don't get along. It basically is the argument between chaotic evil and lawful evil. This with all the nice pillars and everything, I'd have to guess would be more lawful. Or for they to be more direct, it's like the difference between Darth Vader, who's like a member of the Empire and trying to bring order under his fist and his superiors, or his superior, the Emperor, versus the Joker, who just wants to blow stuff up for the heck of it. Okay, uh, I think that has a, another herb in it, so let's go ahead and leave it for now. We can come back later. I should mention, if you have a green herb and you pick up another one from a chest, it basically will just heal you. Like, right at the, right at the spot. Something to kind of keep in mind for when you open chests. Oh, I never remember. Okay, that little spinny guy. That is the first of the metal monsters we're going to run into. There's nothing we can do about them. However, we can get rid of all these gold soldiers and free whatever's in that spot. Oh, okay. Okay, and there's his, his base, so we can't really do anything about him just yet. Sadly, we don't get the metal sword till I think, like, level 5. Which I believe is Dr. Leo's lab, but that's, that's much further ahead. Definitely. And the, at that point, I guess it, it's not necessary to beat the game to come back and do these. 
but you're gonna want to. There's a very nice prize for it. And there's another goat. Okay. Look at this, it's kinda hard to see some of these. Oh yeah, these little. Okay. I'm doing good, I got plenty of health. Oh, and I just leveled up too, so I got all my health back. Sweet. Okay. It's a boy. A very small house. You know, that reminds me. I wanted to comment on that. Dr. Leo's house. Or, they say it's his house. If you look at it, there's a bed. Really not much. For, for bringing a house, it's more like... That little boy's house was about the same size, and that's like basically like a clubhouse you find out later. I'm just saying, it just... Mayor has a big old house, and Dr. Leo, who's supposedly the greatest scientist in this little universe, he has a little one-bedroom, hell, not even just one-room house in the edge of town. Oh, well, probably not supposed to think about it too much. It's always been a trouble in games, just trying to make a town look like a full-fledged town. Oh, getting close to the boss now. We got this bit of annoyance to deal with. If you don't mind where they're doing this, I'm going to go uh, attend to my tea. I'm drinking a nice vanilla chai tea. Sadly, I originally picked these up to help me stay awake for long nights. And then I discovered that they're not good for staying awake long nights. They're good for relaxing you. Ah, I found the other shortcut. Every area of the game is going to have three shortcuts. Now, the first area, like I mentioned before, they kind of lost one because they had that first trial where you pick up the sword and you fight the first monsters. Which I guess effectively serves as the game's tutorial. For the most part, though, you're going to find the first shortcut goes to the town. The second shortcut goes to sort of a midpoint in the level. And the last one is somewhat near the boss. Speaking of which, looks like we're not too far off. I'm going to stir my tea here. Yeah, I should mention these videos I pre recorded the play through. Mostly because I have a hard enough time talking like this. As opposed to uh, talking while they're playing the game at the same time. However, now that I got this new microphone, I might try it, give it a try again. Hmm, come on, good. Okay, first boss. I uh, forget what they call them. Steel arm or something. Really, there's not a lot to him. As you see, he fires. If you're straight below him, he'll fire a three sh three shot spread. If you're at a forty light, if you're at a Four to five degrees? No, that's a, like a. I'm trying to remember what 45 degrees is. I can't remember anymore. 180 is half a circle, so 90 is. Yeah, 45 degrees. If you're 45 degrees, he'll shoot like at an angle at you. Uh, if you get right next to it, he'll actually swing his hand at you over and over again. And basically, just decimate you. He's honestly not that hard, though. The trick is basically just lure him to a side and go up the down conveyor and swing as many as you can. If you're lucky, you can get him three or four times. Sadly, there's really just not a lot to say about it. Though this boss does appear in the um, Illusion of Gaia, if you find all the red jewels in that game. Which is quite tricky. I seem to recall there's spots in that game where you can't go back. So if you miss the red jewel, or if you do the wrong thing in the wrong at a certain spot. Honestly, that's not that huge a deal since uh, yeah, I don't think he drops anything in that game. <laughs> Optional boss just for the sake of killing him. Uh, speaking of optional bosses, I've been looking at a lot of videos lately with the um, mentioning like the top toughest hidden bosses. Why do I never see the Demi Fiends from um, Shin Megami Tensei Digital Devil Saga on there? 
This is the first game. It's a, the, se the secret boss. And it's the main character from Shimbagami uh, Tense Shimbagami Tensei Nocturne. The demi human uh, demi fiend. I think it's called demi fiend. But uh, insanely hard fight. Oh well. Okay, and there's the mayor. Mm, that's nice. What kills me is, from that screen, you see your character go back to town and release the mayor. So I have to presume he just walked all the way back to the third, the monster room afterwards, just for the heck of it. I mean, if I'm wrong, you tell me. Maybe he's just spiritually back in town or something. Oh, well. And now we have the happy to the town theme. And the reincarnated goat. Speaking of which, we're gonna get our yeah, can we get our green herb back? Because as I recall, there's a trick to getting the one in the next area. It's kind of annoying. Uh, that one being the green herb in the next town that you can keep getting every time you lose one. I don't know if you ever need the goat food again, but I'm gonna get it, keep it anyway. Let's see. Uh, there's Dr. Leo's tiny house. Another goat. Well, you'll notice that the architect has built a bridge around the, not a bridge, a, a fence around the town. Yeah, you think about some of this dialogue is probably meant to be read before fighting the final area, or before fighting the final boss. Maybe not. This is something like the world of evil. Why would you paint that anyway? Nope. Not terribly fond of it. Yes, yeah, so there are secret items in this game. There's an extra medical herb, which I didn't need to pick up. But honestly, it doesn't have much of a point, because uh, I could go to the tool shed, the, the tool shop, just a little bit away from there. Okay. Uh, Ah, oh, a sleeping uh, plant. It's sad. The first time I played it, I completely forgot I had the dream rod. That's why I mentioned that you can keep using it. You use it for most of the game. Hmm. In his dreams, he makes his blue jewels appear. Oh, well, I think he gives me some experience. And by return here, she doesn't mean literally here. <laughs> I had made that mistake too when I first played. Okay, and she spat me all the way over here. That was not very nice. Because there's something else we need with that plant. I seem to recall it was one of the NPC's benches that uh, they caught one of the boys slamming something and sticking something beneath one of the plants. So you can move this plant over. And find the pass. A secret pass made by the kids of this area. <laughs> okay, and the pass is like a little doorway up in the mountain. Oh, yeah, right there. That's one that mentions that you can uh, find something beneath the tulips. Oh, one second. Okay, just checking. Uh, I'm playing this and thinking it was the goat, and I have no idea why. Oh, well. Oh, back to the mayor. Oh, that's right, we're gonna find the, the area with the kid. It's somewhere in the northern mountain. Oh, there we are. I sadly remember being stuck there too whenever he, he says that, but he doesn't move because he needs you to get out of the way. Ah, strange bottles are useful because if you have a strange bottle equipped, 
You do not lose your gems if you die. It's a nice last ditch thing. The problem is that if you have two of them, or sorry, if you have one and you pick up another one, there is no benefit. Unlike the medical orb, which has a slight use. Okay, well, I think we've done everything else pretty much here. Let's go talk to the mayor. Let's see. It gives me a brown stone. I don't know what the brown stone looks like, but I have the stone he, I got from him. Is it brown? I mean, could it possibly... It would be funny if it wasn't brown. It was just a purple stone. This is the brown stone. Oh. Master's voice comes thundering from the heavens. The brown stone you have is a key to open the world of evil. Oh my god, is that God's voice? Seriously, the grandpa's going to be shitting himself right there. I mean, I have to assume he heard that. But you're having a conversation with somebody and suddenly the voice of the creator booms down from the heavens. It said it thundered down from the heavens. It... <laughs> Hell, half the village would probably be terrified at that point. Okay. Brownstone you received is one of the six stones set in this world. All six were gathered. The gate to the world of evil shall be opened. Next place is Greenwood. Now we have the option to move when we go here. And incidentally, this is my favorite song, but um, well, we'll pick up in Greenwood next time. Thanks for watching, I'll see you then.